Okay, so Josh, uh, it's my pleasure uh, to introduce you. Um, Josh is the VP uh, for engineering at Histosonics. Um, he's an individual. He's an individual I was really impressed when I met with, um, and uh, he comes with a very impressive background. He has served at Covidian at uh, Metronic uh, as VP for various functions. And also he was co-founder and uh, VP uh, for research, I believe at a startup uh, in the medical uh, area. And he's, he has received uh, uh, bachelor's, master's, and PhDs from the University of Florida. And uh, also he has uh, an extensive medical uh, training through a fellowship in neuroscience. And uh, he's going to spend the next 30 minutes talking about some very exciting work that Histosonics is doing in uh, using histotripsy to uh, address malignant tissue. So without further ado, Josh. Thank you, Nikos. <clears throat> Thank you for the very kind introduction and, and uh, excellent talk, Nick. Um, I think you, you tee this up quite well. And I just wanna congratulate you on your work with love. Uh, I think actually the Matt Roots, who's a part of our team, who's also in Nikos's program, <clears throat> we're equally excited to connect with you and learn more about your work. but. As you'll see, we'll talk through what we're trying to do, but but kidney and kidney cancer is near and dear to our heart on the therapy side. So hoping advanced imaging and image processing can better help enable better therapies. So uh, thanks, thanks for sharing your talk. Look forward to connecting. Um, as Nikos uh, mentioned, I'm very um, humbly excited to introduce you to our company, Histosonics and Histotripsy and Histotripsy um, was really found and born out of the labs at University of, of Michigan nearly 20 years ago. The, the company um, formed about a decade after original applications in prostate related care. And really um, the technology and all the, the core research and innovation really um, was directed at turning what once was a challenging circumstance in ultrasound therapy or ultrasound imaging, acoustic cavitation into a highly controlled and precise therapy. And, and I'll walk you through that in this presentation. So as a company, we're, we're looking, as Nikos mentioned also, to bring this breakthrough therapy into the clinic. Really broadly, it's hard um, for all of us to, to not um, know folks who have been or family members, colleagues impacted by cancer in one way or another. And, and the existing modalities of, of surgery uh, being often the best benefit, but invasive, uh, unfortunately being offered to so few because cancers are usually caught late stage. So the vision of our company is to bring breakthrough therapy and to be able to treat broadly throughout the body and, and non-invasively with really minimal uh, impact to, to patients well-being and, and health. Um, we really do also uh, highly value uh, academic collaboration as the technology is, has um, come from University of Michigan. We partner very closely with other academic partners in application development, clinical research, and preclinical research, uh, including the University of Wisconsin. And then uh, more recently, we're really very excited about uh, broad collaboration with the University of Minnesota uh, both on our upcoming clinical trials that are enrolling now, as well as applied engineering work, uh, including in the robotics the discipline. And then much longer term for us, we're also studying the potential for our therapy and the resulting tissue effects of the therapy. And I'll, I'll show you images shortly of what it could mean even from a, from a medical therapy point of view in immunology. Um, as a company, uh, all small companies, um, no different than academic research, uh, require investment, and, and we're very um, <clears throat> we're very um, pleased to have such great investors and partners, both including Johnson and Johnson and varying medical systems. The both the leaders in their space of, of medical technology, 
and radiation therapy. Um, again, um, uh, approximately half of us or even more will be diagnosed with cancer at some point and, and an overwhelming majority of those diagnoses will, will lead to a recurrence and progression of that disease. And then just from a human element, um, the, the devastation obviously on a personal level is so high, but also from an economic point of view, uh, as we all know, the numbers are really challenging um, in terms of not only survival, but the, the cost and consequence of the therapies themselves. So the need for breakthrough therapy uh, is very, very high. So back to histosonics and our therapy, our vision really in, in looking at really the, the challenges in the medical space for treating cancer today, um, whether they're invasive, whether they use ionizing radiation or heat, um, to be able to offer procedures that really overcome this and, um, and allow patients to be treated really where they could be treated and uh, in the future, even under minimal or no anesthesia, have a treatment for their cancer and literally go home in, in the same day. And, and even in some cases, make cancer treatment more of a chronic disease management. It's a very big vision and hope, but we're hoping to help participate in that sea change with our technology. This is a, an image uh, or model of what our system looks like. This is a complex robotics platform within this system. And this is a mobile device that can be wheeled from various operating rooms or interventional suites or even office setting. Within the device includes our therapy electronics. Um, we'll show you the therapy in a moment. Uh, imaging and onboard imaging. So we have real-time ultrasound imaging, um, a custom control panel and cockpit that has full robotic control, control over imaging, as well as control over the therapy. The robotic arm that you can see um, also has an end effector that we call our treatment head. That treatment head uh, includes a therapy, an ultrasonic therapy transducer that creates very high mechanical pressure waves that is what is responsible for destroying the tumors. And on the robotic side and control system, we've spent a lot of time integrating um, highly um, complex robotic navigation capabilities. So physicians and, and medical staff can use the robot in assistance to, to plan a treatment. And then after they're satisfied with that treatment and visualizing everything in real time, which we'll show you some videos of, uh, they can literally hit a button and the robot will autonomously in an automated fashion deliver that therapy through the plan. And then when complete, you, you uh, command the robot to lift off the patient and the procedure is done. N no requirement for sutures or sti uh, stitches or closing or any post uh, management uh, care because the procedure is, is totally non-invasive. In terms of histotripsy, um, again, some of you may be aware of, of high intensity focus ultrasound or using sound to burn tumors. There are other modalities that use either radiation or heat to focally damage uh, tumors uh, locally. Um, we use a very, very different approach. Our therapy uses uh, very high amplitude, short uh, pulses of sound. Uh, directed to a very specific focal region. This focal region is very, very small. It tends to be millimeter scale. And within that focal region, and in the video here, we'll, sh we'll show you, um, we produce um, with those uh, high pressure sound waves, what we call acoustic cavitation or hit the hysotripsy effect. It comes in the form of a bubble cloud. The bubble cloud um, is formed by these high pressure waves inducing extreme negative pressures in that focal zone, uh, pressures that could exceed uh, easily negative 25 megapascals. And when that happens, the entrapped gas in the tissue, the endogenous gases in, in cells and tissues uh, is pulled out uh, like a vacuum. And the bubbles that are formed within this cloud rapidly expand and collapse um, very quickly. And when they collapse, they violently create uh, shock waves and those shock waves destroy really uh, any tissue that comes in contact with this bubble cloud. And the cool thing about the cloud is that it's very echogenic. So under ultrasound, you can see the cloud, you can see the tissue obviously under ultrasound, and then you can see the remaining tissue effect. So I'll show you a short video here. 
So that's the cloud um, manipulating tissue. This is the liver. And the cloud is the white part. And it's at this point pulsing. And it's only creating that effect where the cloud is. Anything pre or surrounding is unaffected. And the black hole that's echogenic is the liquefied tissue that's been completely destroyed. The system we're using today that we'll walk you through uses a bubble cloud that's on the scale of, of three to six millimeters. You can make these much bigger, uh, larger than a centimeter or two. Some have been made in the lab up to five centimeters. You can also make them sub millimeter. So we're developing an, another platform for treating in the brain non-invasively and, and those bubble clouds can be produced at a scale of less than a millimeter. Uh, here's another video just to show you what it looks like optically. On the left, um, this is just our transducer in a, in, a, in a scan tank. On the right is the ultrasound video of the ultrasound probe at the center of this transducer. And you can see the, the bubble cloud on the left here um, and on the ultrasound video here. I'll play it one more time. And so that's at a fixed focal region and again, that, that cloud is what induces the soft tissue damage, and in this case of destroying tumors. And so we can, we can really use this spatially with a very, very high control. So what you're seeing here is a video of a cloud being moved. It's making a, a block M, um, once from Michigan, now from Minnesota. Uh, but the spatial control that we can generate with this is, is very, very fine. Uh, so that's uh, the, the M is one by one centimeter. So that obviously we're traversing sub centimeter um, pattern and motion very precisely. And in addition to mechanically steering this, we can actually electronically steer its focal zone. Uh, the resulting tissue effect, and th this is where it's really unique compared to other energy modalities, the resulting tissue effect um, is very, very precise and highly demarcated. And, and so what you're looking at here is a tissue slice uh, through a treated um, tissue, and you see a very fine de demarcated line between the left and right, untreated and treated. You can even see cells in the slice that have been cut and treated literally in, in half with their remaining untreated side morphologically and architecturally intact. Um, outside of there being any kind of organ related motion, um, we, can, we can really derive very, very precise boundary conditions over, over this treatment. Um, and so when you're treating in the brain, obviously having that level of precision and reproducibility is very, very important. And then on the treatment side, we can control how we dose by the amount of times we pulse in a, in a given location. So if you want to mildly agitate tissue to completely liquefy it, we have that capability as well. This is what the, the business end of, of the device looks like what the robot steers through. Again, therapy transducer and imaging probe, you can see how it aligns to a focus. We acoustically couple to the patient through uh, a, a highly proprietary um, polymer solution that's filled with degas water. And then the treatment head itself is attached to a robot, the six degree of freedom, a robotic arm that then maneuvers that treatment head through its workspace and through that volume. This is the underside. So the, the therapy transducers can range in a variety of, of surface areas. In coverage, this is a typical sized one that would be used for abdominal treatments. And the imaging probe that's within that can both rotate um, and translate. And that um, fixed geometry and encoded position is also uh, registered to the robot. So when you're looking at something like in the background, the system screen is on, you can see an ultrasound view and actually a fusion into a CT or MR um, that's segmented much like what what Nick was just presenting. All of this is coordinated through a common coordinate system through the robot. So as the physician is moving, they know where they are in space within the image, uh, both the real-time image and any other reference imaging that they're using. Just to show you a few videos, as, as was mentioned before in medicine, you know, the, the amount of experienced surgeons to do or interventionalists to do advanced procedures can be limited and the learning curve steep. So a big part of the robotic element in this is, is both allowing um, 
more reproducible setups within the clinic. And then when you're treating, um, automating treatment so that any treatment that would be given for a given patient, whether you're in Florida, Minnesota, California, Europe, Australia, the plan that would be created and, and the therapy that would be delivered would be exactly the same. So on, on the left, this is just in the lab. Um, at the end of this robot, it's, it's load compensated and assisted, gravity assisted. These are user input devices that allow a doctor or physician to manipulate the robot to set that up on a patient um, while you know streaming all the encoder information off of it. And then on the right, uh, that's the, the left is the bedside. On the right is the console side. We have a six degree of freedom space mouse that's velocity controlled that allows you to steer and position this from a distance. And, are they and it, it's uh, reproducibility or it's repeat, repeatability is just under uh, 50 microns. So in terms of you know, fine tuning the, the approach when you're on the patient, um, that user input device is really helpful. Um, on the right, um, very quickly, uh, just want to give you um, some background before I show you this video, because the, the video itself, in terms of our automated treatment, um, you're not going to see a lot of motion. And that's because we do very precise step changes in terms of how we move and deliver our therapy. But th this is a big deal. Other, other companies that were mentioned previously, like those helping assist in, in Nick's work with intuitive surgical and, and telemanipulated robotic surgical devices, you know, you're really doing broad strokes and a user is uh, through a, a console or input device manipulating many instruments potentially concurrently and doing broad strokes and freeform surgery, really an extension of, of their hands. In our case, what we're doing on the right is the physician will plan a target and a margin, these two broader contour lines that you see. And within those, and the user does not have to plan this at all, we do it behind the scenes for them, is a grid array of treatment locations of those bubble clouds. So as I mentioned, those three by six millimeter clouds with what we're working with now are laid out in a grid form. And then on the bottom, you can see a volumetric representation of a treatment. The robot literally steps through an automated uh, plan of moving uh, both through the pattern, but the pathway it takes the motion pattern it takes to, to build this radial layer uh, treatment up from the bottom uh, uh, to the top. And again, with the imaging probe, you're watching this happen in real time as the cloud moves through the patient. But what's so important about this, um, complementing some of the earlier comments as well, is that this allows us to precisely ensure that we uh, treat the tumor completely, that there's no left remaining tumor. And we, we really felt if you were to do this by hand, um, that would be very, very challenging, particularly when the end effect are doing the damage is millimeter scale. And then also with the robot, it allows us to customize the patient specific situation. So if they have ribs in the way, if they have bowel in the way, these patterns have algorithms around how to control energy delivery so that uh, there's no heat buildup that would lead to any form of, of thermal injury. Um, just based on any time you dump a lot of sound into the body, you can build, build up heat. So this pattern is really important and really we believe um, a great way to realize uh, the use of a robot. So this is what it looks like. You, you may have to look pretty hard. It's moving very slow. Um, in a very confined workspace. But this is the extent of when we need to destroy a tumor, um, this is really what it looks like on the clinical facing side. So we're stepping through this pattern and this pathway and moving um, through very precise increments. And then the therapy pulses are synchronized to this motion. So the dose is, is uniform as well. Um, advanced features, and, and this really dovetails also into what was shared before, you know, in the, in the future, our vision for the robotics is a physician would identify a tumor um, in a CT scanner or, or an MRI, and we would literally um, model the pathway of our therapy to it in the best setup, and that robot would position the treatment head in its most appropriate fashion. And so on the right is, is just some data we're working on you'll see multi-dimension um, CT scans. Our treatment head is on the right and the lower right. What we're really doing is 
selecting a tumor and a focal point. And it's red because right now in the previous data, it would have collided with the patient with the setup. This is an automated way of looking at how to assess the robotic pose and position and align our therapy to the patient um, in a maximum setup that allows us to deliver it with the least um, amount of ribs or bowel blocking the way and really helps a physician both plan and enable that. And, and again, when this would turn red, it would enable and allow the physician to know that that approach is not favored. In addition to this, you know, we, we are using the robot and other um, deep learning uh, algorithms to assess the acoustic pathway that can even minimize the, the cost um, lost due to uh, the anatomy itself. So again, patient specific optimizations. In terms of how we display this to the user, um, you know, these procedures can be really complex. And if the UI is not designed in the right way with the, the appropriate controls, including for the robot, challenging. So here we, we really tried to define what was needed to help best guide uh, the robotic um, uh, enabled planning and data acquisition. So we actually use the robot to capture the image and then give users just enough controls to deliver the treatment without burying them with, with more information. But again, the robotic arm is synchronized to the live ultrasound video that you're seeing in the middle and then to reference scanning. So as this moves the images, uh, or as the, the images move that the plan is updated and then the plan can be customized in any, any uh, shape or design uh, from the Hystripsy side. There's not a limitation to that. In terms of our procedure, we try to keep it really quick, um, target, planning, and treating. Um, I'll focus on the middle because it's most germane on the robotic side, really, to the value of, of having the robot enable breakthrough therapy. As a part of planning, what we also do is simulate the acoustic field and the requirements to generate our cavitation effect, this histotripsy effect. And in planning, the robot will survey uh, through the volume and the plan, those the ellipsoidal um, contours that you can see in the middle. I know they're small, so I apologize. But assess the energy required to deliver it to achieve really robust tumor destruction. At the same time, calculate how to how to manage any collateral damage that, that could come and to work that out. Uh, and then the robot upon um, helping assist the, the physician from completing that. In the last phase, treat and monitor, the physician literally only has to verify that the plan meets their clinical medical uh, acceptance and then they press a button and then automated treatment comes over and the robot and therapy are synchronized to deliver um, you know, uniform uh, dose um, through the volume uh, per the plan. And then the physician or user can observe that bubble cloud, like the video I showed, traversing through the volume in real time, destroying the tissue. And then we show um, and annotate basically a 3D grid of where they are in their treatment and their status. Um, these, these treatments can range from under 10 minutes to an hour. It really depends on the size of the tumor, its location, and, and why it's so important to have patient-specific planning. Uh, another big thing that we're doing in, in part uh, um, with Minnesota and Nikos and other academic collaborators is really using advanced data that's robotically acquired to inform treatment planning. So here is, is a short video where we're using the robot to capture ultrasound video on the patient. Uh, and this is important because in previous attempts of using ultrasound data, um, the old mantra of garbage in, garbage out can really challenge these advanced techniques if, if the way the data is not collected is done well. So again, the benefit of a robot and we're basically taking the ultrasound video that we've robotically acquired, we're annotating points where we think we are in the CT and what's going to happen um, following these steps is we're going to mesh and fuse the ultrasound video into the MR. And now we have um, uh, the ability to use a deformation model to adjust the deformation of, of the force exerted on the patient. And it allows us to now have robotic um, navigation and delivery or robotically enabled navigation and delivery through real-time imaging that is now fused to reference imaging. And what's important about this is 
while ultrasound from an imaging standpoint is really beneficial, it can be challenging in terms of what uh, tumors it can see. So there are certain targets that are ultrasound invisible. And then we have um, robust 3D models of the patient uh, as well. And then again, last, just a bigger view, but, but after you conduct your treatment and watch the cloud go through, you, you get immediate treatment verification. Um, I thought I'd show you um, also, um, we're entering uh, another study and, and um, we're very uh, fortunate to have University of Minnesota as a part of it, but just some early data of what this translates to in the clinic and, and the benefit of robotic delivery of, of, of hysotripsy. <clears throat> Um, so in terms of our first in man study, we're able to treat um, uh, eight patients and 11 treatments. Uh, we treated a variety of cancers, colorectal, breast, liver, all tumors within the liver, but some that had metastasized to the liver. The, proce the procedures are relatively quick. Average time was 23 minutes. And most encouraging is that all the procedures are really well tolerated and patients did not exhibit any discomfort or, or pain. And there was no collateral damage um, uh, outside of where we intended to treat. So just to make this real for you, what you're looking at um, with the yellow errors or, or tumors, these, this is a liver cancer tumor um, in a segment of the liver. Um, beside it is, is a very delicate artery beneath it, the pancreas. Um, on the left is the, are the pre-images. On the right, these are MRIs immediately after treating. What, what I'll highlight for you, again, the, the precision of the therapy, but also the importance of robotics. In, in this bottom picture here, we basically prescribed this treatment and, and it matched the plan um, nearly perfectly. But this small boundary between the treatment and the underlying liver with the pancreas, if we would have missed or other therapies, which you don't have as fine control of, injuring the pancreas could have been very, very um, risky for the patient with, with adverse events. And then um, being able to see um, the fact that uh, we have very high tissue destruction, uh, but have maintained an important vessel running through it to the contralateral side of the liver is also a very cool, cool finding. Uh, and then last, <clears throat> one part that I, I didn't mention too much yet, but one of the things we think is really neat about the novel capability of, of histotripsy is the ability to treat tissue, but because we treat it mechanically and not using heat or ionizing energy, there's not um, a, a big scar or inflammatory reaction to these treatments in terms of as a cancer patient, when you're followed up with CT or MRI uh, for the rest of your life, they can all often be confounding <clears throat> in terms of what's left is that inflammation is an, is an infection. If something seems to be lighting up, is it truly tumor or is it just an artifact of the therapy? We've been observing, and while it's limited patients, but these treatments heal and resorb. So you can see from the pre and, and, and post moving through three months, by three months, the treatment is pretty much gone. The treatment site has, has um, healed or resorbed. So we're hopeful that uh, this will be <clears throat> really helpful in the clinic as, as patients are treated. If things were to happen or cancer were to come back, it would make finding it um, easier and faster. And then just lastly, um, last uh, slide, and, and then I'm happy to answer any questions. You know, in, in terms of the ability to treat patients that, that have really progressive disease, you know, we're hopeful that we can treat patients that have metastatic disease with many tumors. So in this case, this was a female a patient that had many colorectal mets to her liver. And, and unfortunately, many of these patients are challenged with just base liver function based on the number of tumors in the liver. And in a single uh, procedure setting, we were able to treat three of them. You can see these are three really big treatments and, and she really well tolerated this. Um, and critical structures like bile ducts and others were left um, spared and remaining. Uh, so from a safety point of view and, and toleration point of view, just very exciting to see the, the ability to do this. A lot more to learn, but, but very promising. So in, in summary, um, just again, thank you for, for letting me share this. Uh, happy um, to answer any questions and, and have 
um, any also any feedback you may have. But on our side, we're really focused as a company on, on the integration and impl implementation of, of breakthrough therapy with imaging and robotics and, and, and manipulation of those. Um, we're, we're really focused also on trying to prove this clinically. So we're doing two studies in, in the US and, and one in the EU. And, and again, very humbly thankful to have University of Minnesota as an enrolling site and a partner. Um, and um, not stopping there, we're advancing our application development in, in kidney, pancreas, uh, and brain in, in parallel, as well as um, hopefully being able to demonstrate advancing in immuno-oncology and, and immune response as well. And uh, we also have several academic collaborations going on. And, and, and if anyone is here would be interested in learning more or has ideas, uh, we would love to hear about them. And uh, we're, we're near term focused on some budding, exciting um, collaborations with Nikos and his lab on advanced computer vision and, and automation projects um, to help make this um, an easy to use, broader, more adoptable uh, modality in the clinic uh, to help serve uh, 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 our, our colleagues, friends, and family members, uh, either now or in the future, who may who may need need help. So, with that, um, thank you, and uh, happy to answer any any questions you may have. Charles, thank you very much for sharing with us your company's exciting uh, procedures. Are there any questions for Josh? Okay, no problem. Thank you. Well, uh, we really thank you very much, uh, Josh, for sharing uh, this exciting and uh, revolutionary technology, actually. Uh, we hope that you can quickly transition this to product. And we look forward to uh, engaging you with our lab uh, and uh, have some uh, common you know, uh, uh, work in the future. Uh, maybe we can contribute some to your automated, you know, computer vision solutions that you want to integrate. And, uh, we would love uh, that. We yeah, would love yeah. that. Now, I'll, I'll just say for that's here, um, I'm very hopeful to uh, find an, an army of interns or co-ops for this summer and in the future. So if you have any interested students, um, please send them my way. Yeah, um, I'm sure Nico is going to be getting in touch with you. Yeah. Okay. There's no question about it. Yeah. So, okay. Let me ask um, one question for yeah. Josh. Josh, the particular robotic devices that you're using, are they uh, provided by a particular company? They are custom made or, or what? Yeah. So when we started, we were building our own. Um, and we, we quickly realized that uh, our requirements are, are really well defined. And, you know, there were, um, third party leaders in the space like the universal robotics and others that offered off the shelf solutions that really met our needs, had really well-defined APIs, control systems, had spent a lot of time on, on um, scalable manufacturing. Um, and so um, we've partnered with universal robots. So they're a very strong partner of ours. And we do envision there are some applications where we know um, an off-the-shelf robot may not be um, okay. may not be doable, particularly for example, if you're in neuro or other applications, especially where you have very high payload situations and need very precise motion of those high payloads. But um, for now, we're really well well positioned with off-the-shelf technology, and you are has been a great a great partner so far. Yeah. 